When I put together this collection of poems five years ago, I was, as they say in Spanish, cumpliendo, accomplishing my 60th year. I found myself pleasantly surprised by the wisdom of my younger self and wished I had been able to access it at the time. But there is always a crucial pause between voicing and understanding and inhabiting it, a pace that can't be forced, as any butterfly or locust will tell you. Putting the book together, I understood something important about the arc of my own life, something a narrative autobiography couldn't give me. We tend to want to smooth out our past, to have it conform in some prescient way with our present. But poems, at least mine, tend to be written in the thick of life, especially at moments of traumatic change. So to combine them in a single arc, defined solely by time, paradoxically invited me back into the immediacy of experience, into those moments when you don't know how it is all going to unfold. And that feels to me, even today, the truest story. The one I'm still equally blindly, intensely, faithfully living out. A dynamic I tried to describe in the poem from which I took the title for the collection, The Sanctity of the Moment. Creativity, with its blind surge and trailing intelligence, is my most resilient and enduring experience of faith. I don't know what would have happened to me if I hadn't, at some teacher's urging, written my first poem at 13. The lines were eminently forgettable, I'll spare you. What is more vivid to me is the image I tried to describe. The turquoise lights of a police cruiser flashing metrically across my eyes and the eyes of other bystanders drawn together at twilight by something unexpected and possibly tragic out there. The circle we silently, unconsciously created to contain it and its dangerous resonances inside us. I do remember the feeling I had when I silently read the words I'd written, an easing in my chest, part relief and part ecstasy. There were words for where I was truly living, and these words could evoke sensuous images that could resonate safely inside me and perhaps others, a communication purer and more mysterious, more true to life than daily speech. The hope that came with this discovery, that out of raw sensation, raw intuition, and raw emotion, something coherent, radiant, meaningful, and communicable could be shaped, has never left me, even if I've had to rediscover it compulsively, faithfully, all my life through various artistic mediums. That hope is my raison d'etre, my praise song. The photographs in this book were my way of exploring the sensuous experience of the physical act of writing. In these images, words burn, nestle in the bowl of a fallen leaf, float in ocean surf, fast running streams, and among reflections on still lakes. They reveal themselves through ice, snow. They tattoo themselves on skin, embed in vertebrae, float within the pelvic bowl. As material, as real as anything else in the world. But the insight I've grown into in the last five years is how important recording these poems at 60 was for me. Hearing these inner songs resonate in real air brought me into direct relationship with another hope, of real communication in real time with real people, of a kind that is possible only through art truer to life than daily speech, communication that allows the unique and vast universe of feeling within you to resonate safely with the one in me. The Sanctity of the Moment 
The sanctity of the moment is just that it is, and it won't return, and it wasn't earned. How can we rest serenely in what we must give up? The mind distorts time, that savage metronome, because it is all we know of love and sorrow. This holding pattern, growing old, so old, and we want to know what is pushing us, what is drawing us, and what is letting us time and time and time again go. As if we were just thoughts, not flesh and blood and something, some sweet something that wants to take hold forever. Like the child in the womb who never dreams that what is both food and breath to her, her now and her forever will ever be severed.